Hi everybody, it's Miss Melissa here with another middle grade book reading for you. Today I am going to be sharing the first chapter of Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez, part of Rick Reardon Presents, and it was published by Disney Hyperion. So just a couple of facts or information about the book if you're interested in reading it. Right now it does not have a Lexile level but it is level 4.9 for AR and it's worth 14 points. Um, it is available as a book at the library, as an ebook on Hoopla, and as an ebook and e audiobook on Overdrive. So, uh, a quick little um, summary or hint about the book. First off, we have Sal. He's one of the main characters. Sal is an amateur magician, uh, or I like to call him a conjurer. He is able to reach through space and time and basically pull out whatever he wants. Um, this sounds like a really cool trick, but it actually ends, um, ends up with Sal getting in trouble a lot of times. And sometimes he pulls things out that he really shouldn't. Um, I won't give it away what he pulls out. Um, on the other side, we have Gabby, and she is the top student of her class. She's a student council president. Uh, she knows everybody, is friends with everybody, and she also takes notice of Sal and his interesting powers, and she wants to find out what that's about. So what ensues is an adventure with the two of them and a really beautiful friendship that grows from it. Uh, there is a sequel already out, which I need to read, called Sal and Gabby Fix the Universe. So if you like this one, you should read the next. So I'm going to share with you the first chapter here. One. There's all sorts of bad advice out there about how to deal with bullies. Ignore them, stand up to them, tell a teacher, tell a parent, tell your dentist while he's jamming your teeth back into your face. The real way to deal with a bully is to stick a raw chicken in their locker. I had my showdown with Yasmani Robles just three days after I had started my new life at Kulico Academy of the Arts a magnet school in the middle of Miami. To get in, you had to have good grades, pass an interview, and either submit a portfolio for painting or writing, or audition for theater or music. You'd think all the effort someone has to go through to get into Kulico would, ke would have kept out bullies, but I guess not. I guess there are just too many of them in the world. If your school only allowed in kids who'd never pick on anyone, you'd have an empty school. Whatever. It's not like I hadn't learned how to handle bullies back in Connecticut. On Wednesday, between fourth and fifth periods, I went to the lockers along with half a million other kids. I stoned my history book and grabbed math so I could do homework during lunch, then opened my bag of magic tricks and put on my gotcha stamp ring. We would be doing introductions in my eighth period theater class, and I thought I could use it to demonstrate some sleight of hand. Magic is kind of my thing. I had a minute before I needed to go, so I took out my diabetes bag and fished out my glucose meter. I thought I'd be all right until lunch, but I'd started to feel spacey and dreamy at the end of my last class. Blood sugar levels might be falling. Best to check now. As I rummaged, I noticed the tall kid next to me struggling to get his locker open. He was as Cuban as they come. Brown, built like a track and field champ, with a haircut so short you could see the bumpy skin of his scalp beneath what was left of his tiny curls. He'd wrestled with his combination lock yesterday too and never figured it out, so he'd had to carry a full backpack of books to his next class. I'd had trouble with my locker on the first day until I'd figured out you, had to, you have to squeeze it as you turn the dial. And I'm a nice guy, so I said to him, hey man, my lock sucks too. The trick is to squeeze the top while that's all I got out before he punched his locker. The whole hallway grew a little quieter. Yasmani, I learned his name later, but why keep you in suspense? Slowly turned to look at me. 
He scanned me up and down, doing some tough guy calculations to figure out if he could take me. Apparently, he thought he could, because he stepped up to me fast, ferocious, chest out, arms wide. He'd been in a lot of fight, fights, judging from his flat as a shamrock nose. Just come back from safari, white boy, he asked. I mean, if you even are a boy. Let's take a second to break down this insult. The safari crack was because I had on canvas cargo pants and a cargo vest, each with four pockets brimming with gadgets and tricks of the trade. Pretty much all the clothes I own have tons of pockets. I'm ready to perform at any time. You never know when the world is going to need a little magic. The white boy crack was because, I guess, to him I looked white. Back when I lived in Connecticut, kids were telling me to go back to Brown Town all the time. But I was in Miami now. New place, new rules about skin color. And the, if you are a boy, I kept my hair pretty long. It gave me a place to hide stuff in the middle of a trick. And to this caveman's mind, calling someone a girl was an insult. Whatever. I tried the My Little Pony approach to handling bullies. Sorry, just trying to help. And I started to walk away. He body blocked me. You wanted to help me? Why would a sandwich like you think I need your help? Now I looked him in the eye. Your locker's still locked, isn't it? I probably shouldn't have said anything, but he called me a sandwich. Some insult you can't let slide. In response, he did what bullies do. He slapped my diabetes bag out of my hands. It hit the ground with a glassy crunch. My stomach crunched right along with it. That pack contained my insulin, my syringes, my blood glucose meter, my sharps disposal container for used needles, my band-aids, and a fun-sized bag of Skittles. If he broke something important in that pack, I could be in real trouble. I knelt down to pick it up, my hands shaking as they reached for the bag. I tried to relax. I closed my eyes, breathed slowly, and remembered what Poppy had said to me after Mommy died. Fear is your body trying to tell your brain what to do. But the brain is the king of the body. It calls the shots. I opened my eyes slowly, the way good guys in movies do when they've just figured out how to beat the villain. I noticed that the bright young scholars of Kuliko Academy of the Arts had formed a ring about around Yasmani and me. This crowd didn't seem as bloodthirsty as the ones in my last school had been. In Connecticut, kids hooted like in Planet of the Apes whenever a fight was about to start, jumping up and down and beating on each other in anticipation of someone getting wedged back to the Stone Age. But these little kids looked kind of grim and quiet like this was some boring school assembly they had to attend. Well, from my perspective, it didn't really matter, matter whether they were enjoying themselves or not. They had me surrounded just the same. I was trapped. Wait, no, that's an excuse, and I don't lie to myself. I could have pushed my way out of there if I'd wanted to, but now all eyes were on me. I had an audience, and I am a showman. Yasmani stretched his fingers wide while he made before he made two fists. Time to die, little man, stand up. I stood all right, got right in his face. Time to die, I asked. Time to die, he repeated. Like the dead chicken in your locker, I asked. What? See, that's the real secret of dealing with bullies. Change the game. You thought we were going to fist fight, Mr. Tough Guy, but surprise, suddenly we're talking about murdered poultry. The dead chicken in your locker, I said, explaining it to the crowd. That's the real reason you didn't want to open it. You didn't want anyone to see your dead chicken, so they, didn't, so they wouldn't know you keep dead chickens in your locker. Because, I said, turning to face Yasmani again, what kind of weirdo keeps dead chickens in his locker? Stop saying dead chicken! Everybody laughed. That probably would have sent Yasmani into a berserker rage if some girl hadn't shrieked, blood! She was pointing at Yasmani's locker. What? Yasmani asked again. He and everybody else looked at his locker. And yeah, there was watery pink blood leaking from it, the kind you find at the bottom of styrofoam meat packages. Not a lot, but enough to drip from the bottom of the locker door and pool on the floor and it only takes a little bit of blood to freak people all the way out. Not me though. I mean, 
I didn't know Sangre de Pollo was going to come dripping out of his locker, but it wasn't exactly a surprise either. I could work with it. Open it, I said to Yasmani, unless you're too chicken. If he hadn't been completely bewildered by what was happening, he would have gorilla rushed me for sure. Instead, he walked over to his locker and tried to undo the lock. Two, four, seven yanks on it, each angrier than the last. Then he punched his locker door again and said, I can't open this stupid thing. I keep trying, but I can't. Here, let me. He took a step back to let me through, but not without asking, what? How you know my combo? His combo was still taped to the back of the lock, about as sharp as a bowling ball, this Yasmani. I looked at him over my shoulder with spooky eyes and replied, fool, I am a magician. I can read your mind. Then I spun the dial with fast fingers, clock, then counter, then clockwise again. I tugged the lock open dramatically and with a flourish, removed it. You want the honors, I asked him, stuffing aside with a gracious magician's bow. bow. Yasmani, bro, had gone full autopilot by now, stepped forward and opened the locker door, every kid behind him on tiptoe, watching, waiting. A whole raw chicken, like you get at the grocery store, with bumpy yellow skin and no head, flipped out of his locker, landed on its chicken butt, and went splat. Kids scattered, screaming. Adults will be here any second. Yasmani did a 180 and looked around wildly. He didn't have eyes anymore, just fear. I didn't put no dead chicken in my locker, he yelled. You gotta believe me. I believe you, I said. Of course I did. It was I who had put it in there after all. Abracadabra chicken plucker. All right, that was the first chapter. I hope you enjoyed it and that you want to continue your reading. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or would like to share something with us, please do so at kids at lcplin.org. Have a good day, everyone.